Ramble. Thank you to NetSuite and HelloFresh for sponsoring today's episode. I did that invisible box thing today. What do you mean? So, you know. Oh, the one where you would step on it? You, you, where you're going, you're walking, and then you step on an invisible box uh -huh. and float magically. Right. I was walking down the city streets, and there was a poo poo underneath me. And There's I was on. There's a lot of poo poo here in NYC. I was on my phone trying to figure out the subway time, make sure I was going to get here to you in time. And I, I like, it was a magical moment. Mm. I, I, I launched off of nothing. And then I looked around to see if anyone saw it. And no one did. Dang. But, you know, you call that a New that's, York minute. And that's why it's important to be a social media expert. Yeah. Because these trends can actually come in handy and save your <laughs> life. And uh, it's important to do that. If you hear the city streets around us, we are in uh, we're in New York. This is exciting. This is our first, first ever uh, couch pod. Yeah. We're, we're just in Keith's Airbnb. Uh, we're Single in, cam catch pod. Well, I came over to his three-story walk-up, uh -huh. which was very exciting. I buzzed my way in. Mm -hmm. The hallway smelled like hot trash, yeah. which is crazy because it's so cold here. It's so hot in the buildings, though. <laughs> New York loves to have it be that you go from 30 degrees outside to 85 degrees inside so that you're sweating by the time you get your coat off. I feel like I, I've transported oh, back in time. I, I, yeah, I have a wine glass full of water. Because it's just a bunch of boys living in an apartment. It definitely feels collegiate <laughs> in its in its in the homestead, where you know we have a lot of frozen food in the freezer. Oh yeah, we do a lot of crockpot meals. You doing Elio's? What's that? Oh, you know, I just don't know if I can. Oh, I lived it's on Elio's in college. Elio's. It's a, a rectangular pizza that's frozen. No, we have nice pizza. <laughs> you know. Okay. <laughs> Okay. 19 anymore. Okay. <laughs> but we do have um, frozen tamales that are from Trader Joe's that are bueno. Yeah. <laughs> Trader. <laughs> Amigusta. Do they still write Trader Jose on that or did they give I that up? I think they stopped. Yeah. But honestly, I don't know. I don't even get, I don't even look at it. I open them up. I microwave them. I eat them. Delicious. So y'all know the, the viewers, y'all know we're here in New York because Keith is in the middle well, towards the back end of his run of Wizard of Friendship, he's been a little off-Broadway star. Yep. We got Alex Lewis sitting off camera. Hi. I keep looking to Alex because I feel like I need to perform to someone and just it's staring nice. at Keith. It's is... nice to have. I mean, I, luckily we have the ability to look at the camera monitor. <sighs> well, the lens is blocking. You can't see, but I can see it, and it's great it. for me. Ugh. I know. I love being able to check on myself, make sure I'm looking good. So it was crazy to me. I mean, I flew out here a couple days ago. This trip was really just... Uh, just a Keith trip. I mm -hmm. came out here to hang out with Keith, which was a blast. I got to see Wizard of Friendship, not blowing smoke up your collective asses. It's a great show, and it was so fun to see. I, I can't imagine how much fun you guys are having doing it. And I know that we've talked about it on the pod. Mm -hmm. so, so to me, the thing to talk about is, one, just to give this moment of flowers of, you guys should be really proud of yourself. Thanks. One, just the work that goes into something like this. I told Keith the other day, no matter what it is, you should be proud because mm -hmm. holy shit, like so many people dream of doing something, you did something. Mm -hmm. And it took months, if not a, over a year of effort. Alex wrote a great script. You guys put together great music. Um, Keith directed the fuck out of it. You have a back, uh, a, a cast of actors around you who are way more talented than you guys, yep. which is so mm -hmm. wonderful. <laughs> um, they're all so great. But then, the show itself is also really fucking fun. Yeah, it's a blast. Uh, and so it, it had this infectious energy and reminded me, even just the minute I was there, of like, oh yeah, this is really fun. Mm -hmm. I totally understand like how you catch that bug and you can't stop. Yeah. Yeah, we're currently exactly halfway through the Wizard of Friendship run. We're technically a little bit more than halfway through of all of the shows because we did three concerts before yeah. the run opened. But... As of today, we start the, what, the 15th? No, the 11th show of Wizard of Friendship, and there are 20 shows of Wizard of Friendship, not counting the dress rehearsal. So, okay, 11 shows in. Are you still making discoveries about the show? Uh, do you feel at this point you know what is going to hit? Like, I, I think there's always this question to people that don't do theater, or, or even me. Like, I did theater in, in high school. Right. The most I ever got to do a show was three times. The most I ever got to do any show was our tour. Mm -hmm. And I was, what, 16 times over? No, I think we did more than that. Well, we however many like times. 28 it, shows total. That show Something wasn't crazy. as tight as this, because it was right. a... 
And so, yeah. like, is it still fun to do the same thing night after night after night? It's super fun. We definitely know what jokes hit, but it's also we know what scenes allow for this looseness mm. of finding new jokes, or at least finding new ways to the same jokes. Because, like, obviously the scene's beginning and end has to be the same because they're literally cue lines that tell you when to tell our booth operator, Sajari, when to hit a projection, when to play a song, when to do a sound cue, when to do a light cue, when the scene is over, when the scene is beginning. So there are things that have to be the same. But then there are things that don't. And our job is to not put too many things that don't, but just amount, enough that are like really fun, make the audience aware that we're making stuff up right now. And yeah. that this has this loose playfulness. And like sometimes it's just yelling at an audience member who's trying to go to the bathroom in the middle of a scene. My favorite part of the show. <laughs> which was a blast. Al well, it's so fun too because Alex has like this, this, um, this vibe of being like just a real nice guy, right? And then all of a sudden he's like, where are you going, motherfucker? <laughs> And to hear him call an audience member motherfucker. So, and then she's like, I go to the bathroom. It's like, this is a Broadway show. This is, you, there's an intermission. You yeah. don't, you don't get you up. Got time. <laughs> We've built in the Sit time down. for the bathroom. Sit down on and, the stairs. And it became a bit of, and then whatever and the then next number Alex was. Alex went out into the audience and performed directly at that audience member, which that, that character has never left the stage in that moment. So that was really fun and exciting. Yeah. And it, it creates the vibe that the show is alive and in that moment and can only happen in that moment. So as yeah. an audience member, you're like, oh shit, I'm like, I'm affecting the energy. I'm making it right now. It's different than a Broadway show in a way I really enjoyed. There are definitely times where I've given the direction that we're not performing to the audience here, we're performing at the audience here. Mm -hmm. You have to go be kind of adversarial with them to get them on board with what's happening. And that was a great example of Alex was performing at that audience member, <laughs> not to them. Um, but there are the other times that like we're performing to them, but then there's times when we're actually like the giant bird song when we're in the audience. I told the whole cast, like, you're performing at them. Yeah. Like you are getting them to do what you want them to do right now. And that is get up and it should become like a live music concert where everyone's on their feet and clapping along and being a part of it. And then they're going to sit back down and become a silent audience again right after that. Yeah. It feels like it's like a gas leak experience where you cumulatively, <laughs> you just all go zany together and mm -hmm. that's. That's the joy. I'm sure we'll talk more about the show inevitably, but you're now, this is what, a month li into living in uh -huh. New York? So you're a New York City boy now. <sighs> I, mean, I wish that I had more New York City experiences, but the truth is the first two weeks, I, we were only here from about midnight until 8 a.m. every day. And obviously we were unconscious for most of that time. And then otherwise you're We just, were at the theater. Wow. We were at the theater from about 9.30 to 11 every day. Now we'd leave for lunch and come back. And sometimes we would have breakfast here, so we'd be here till 9.15. But sometimes we'd get breakfast out before we got there. But we'd be there the whole day. We'd come back. Huey would be tweaking something with the music because like, oh, this song is good, but we can't hear the cue because uh, maybe the audience is going to be clapping over this part. So we need to hear like, when do you start singing in this song? It's hard to pick it out. So we like added little things that are just secret triggers for ourselves. And then every time the music changed, the projections changed. So I had to re, I had to add something to the projection or extend the projection, re-export the projection. Some days I was there for longer times, like making sure that every cue was as perfect as I could get it and going through the script and literally like on this line, at this moment, you play this cue. This cue matches with this light. So some of them can be married, which is actually kind of cool. I've, got, I've learned a lot about the the board operating process of a show, which is something that's been pretty foreign to me, but like the light board actually controls the computer through a link where like if you type in like 248, 248 might just be a light cue. So it might just make a light thing do something. But 248 could be married to a video cue and it have no lights. So the whole thing is run out of literally him following on the script. And at this point it says uh, 322, 322. And after this is a line, enter, that thing happens. Cool. And then, so you're queuing up the thing and when we were doing Beetlejuice, you can watch that video. There's one time where it was like, all right, uh, 322 ready, and go. And they hit go. And that, like, it literally is timed. And what's great for Sajari, our board operator, is he is actually watching a show that has all this heavy improv. Uh -huh. So he's got to be really attentive yeah. to listen to when those cue lines happen. And sometimes our cue lines are... 75% the right wording of the cue line because, <laughs> because how we've gotten to the cue line doesn't make sense anymore. Right. So I have to include the words that are necessary but deliver it in a way that <laughs> links whatever stupid bit we've been doing oh, to whatever cue that needs to be called. So he's 
crushing it up there in terms of how hard it is to yeah, call our show. Yeah, but that's true collaboration. Truly, yeah. and I, I really appreciate him, and, I'm, and we've been great uh, working together to figure out how to make it a smooth process. Now, this is a, a sharp left turn in our conversation, but I'm very distracted by this device right here ah. as the sirens come. Just, you hear. guys want a real New York City podcast. This is it. What's great and something we've learned is that, th so this is a little steamer, it's just for our voices. But it's a, okay, well, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta hold. <laughs> maybe, okay, maybe let's put a pause on this. Let's talk about living in New York City. Living in New York because City. Because you guys, I heard you sleep with the windows open because it's too hot in here. The radiator is building controls, which means we can't control the thermostat. Uh -huh. Why don't you come, come over here and, and tell us, let's uh, sit in here on the couch. We got this Zoom that'll sure. pick you up. So Brian, Brian Wall and I, um, we witnessed what I can only describe as a New York soap opera the other night. That's beautiful. Like, uh, we, I was in my room. See, even if the windows, first of all, are closed, you hear everything. It doesn't matter. It sounds yeah. like they're open. And do, I'm curious, do you find that, I find that soothing. I have very fond memories of sleeping in my grandmother's apartment and like waking up to like the sounds of the bus, the sounds of the city. It's very nostalgic for me. But Most I feel of like our it, sounds are sirens and screaming. Yeah, like, <laughs> like people we, screaming. I was falling asleep the other night and I just hear, "Why do you always do this to me?" Over and over again. Someone was just screaming that over and over. So I come out to the living room where Brian and Alyssa are and, I'm, and uh, Avery. I was like, do you guys hear that? And they said, no. So then we all pile into my room like it's a little clown car, open the window and look like we look out the window and see these two people fighting, like just screaming, you know, what? Now, is this a lover's quarrel or friends? I sort of think it was a lover's quarrel. It was two gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And another gentleman came at one point throughout the fight and like took the guy that was really going nuts. Like they they took him down the street and the guy just in the middle of this, like he walks right to where our window is basically. So we're right across the street from him. He drops to his knees, streetcar named Desire style and goes, why does this always happen? What did I do? <laughs> yeah, that's what, what did, what I, did do? I do? It was wild. Wow, that's, by the way, I was hoping, I was like, now is this, did it get violent or can we just keep this in a street car? It seemed like violent, there were, and I like well, it, got a, it did get a little violent. Looks, there was some shoving I heard and there was maybe a punch in the face because one guy was yes. holding his face. <laughs> maybe. So, maybe. <laughs> maybe. It's unclear. And, but we live like, there's like seven bars down the street, like on our block. And so on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday, Friday and Saturday, it gets loud and sometimes people are just screaming with revelry sometimes people are screaming with sadness sometimes so there was a car alarm going off for about an hour the other night and a group of people came out and started yelling at the car <laughs> it's really funny yelling i think to try to alert the person whose car it was as if they couldn't already hear it yeah because they were yelling hello yeah. hello your car hello it was so funny though i have this uh fantasy of of moving back here and i think it's because ooh, that, was a, screaming. that was a scream of delight yeah sometimes <laughs> it's happy <laughs> i i have a dream of moving back to new york and i i think it's based on one just nostalgia of growing up here and two the fact that i always come and visit in the springtime or in the fall and this is the first time in a long time that i've been here in early may or early yeah. March. Early March. I always and confuse those two. And it sucks. <laughs> it's Yesterday so brutal. was especially blah. It was snowy oh. and so windy. The wind was just going in every direction. But I, I mean, the, the parts I have gotten to enjoy of New York City, I love that there's live music so many places. There's great jazz. Like I've been going to every a night. jazz bar about every night and just listening to free jazz and drinking a nice drink and like hanging out. It's very cool. There's also for us, because we're in this Broadway scene, we know like the Broadway bars. So we go to bars and sometimes like, oh, like, oh, we're going to meet up with the cast of Little Shop for a drink. So oh, funny. Oh, the so cast you got Aladdin. off of your show and they got off their show and now you go to this bar and somehow fans out there don't know. But if you're out there, just find the bars. There's You'll some bars that have, and we were there one day and they were like, oh, sorry, it's really busy tonight. There's the whole cast of Aladdin is here for a birthday. <laughs> And then we're, uh, we're talking to Nico, our choreographer. He's like, that's Aladdin. That's that person. That person plays the genie. <laughs> and they, because they all know each other. Even if they don't know each other, they know who each other are. Mm -hmm. And they know who's in what shows. And we've been there. And then. Like, and now, okay, when you go into a bar and it's like cast of Little Shop, cast of Aladdin, are they like, hey, Lou Burger? Or is it like, 
Those are those new chumps who think they can put on a Broadway show. And then there's like the snapping. And then you had to get into like a dance battle. There's a little bit of dance battle. And then they accepted you. And now you're one of them. Like, how did it go? There's both. There's definitely people who are like, who know who we are. And they're like, oh, you're in town doing the show. How's your show going? Like, tell me all about it. Like, because some of them are like in a higher tier of off-Broadway or Broadway. So they don't really know what it's like to do. A, a small off Broadway show, so they're like, "What's it like? Like, what what's what are you doing? What's your sure. pain points?" And we kind of tell them what like our pain points are and like the good things. Yeah, and I imagine Aladdin is it's just a different beast altogether. Totally. It's the difference between doing a an indie film and a Marvel movie. Right. It's just you're on a different. It's a different art form almost. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the trouble is, everyone wants to see each other's show, yeah. but nobody can except. Us, because we don't have shows on, on Tuesday, Tuesday, so we can go see some of the other in, shows. In theory, we could really hustle and see a Wednesday matinee. But it would be tough, because our call time's at 5. And then we probably wouldn't eat. Any. Yeah, you wouldn't eat any food. Or, or you just have to sneak a sandwich somewhere in between. Because our, our days are pretty are busier than the other Broadway people's days, because we have the meet and greets. Yeah. So we come in and do our sound check. Then we do a meet and greet. Then we go back and get dressed. And then the show is starting. So there's like the two hours before our show, we're working that whole time. Whereas I think other people can get there about an hour before or two hours before, but they're just in makeup. They're sitting, they're getting ready. This didn't certainly work, but they're not performing. We're performing in our meet and greets to I, you know, each person. So it's been what? It's been one week. Three years since we went on tour, mm-hmm. and I haven't really seen many of Try Guys fans or Luberger fans in a long time. Yeah, and I forgot how nice they are. They're the best. <laughs> it's Truly, so lovely. they're the the sweetest fans. They are having. They're there to have fun. Our show also because it's here in New York and it's sold out. Like they have people from the UK coming to see the show, from Canada, wow. from Texas, from Seattle. Like people are flying intercontinentally to see our show, which is bizarre and not what I expected. I expected we'd get a lot of Northeast. Sure. You know, I thought, okay, there's got to be, you know, 3,000 fans between Boston and Philly and D.C. and New York and, like, all those people will come. Don't but forget actually, Cambridge. It's, yeah, yeah. Actually, don't, it's, don't forget New Haven. Somebody, yeah. somebody came out who saw the Los Angeles run. They, like, saw the Los Angeles run and then flew out for this. Just wow. Because they, they liked the show so much. It was really Ten cool. rules. Oh, shit. Let me tell, okay, speaking of our, our fans... Uh, Because, again, I I have a hard time with that concept. I think because we do YouTube, so much of our brain is trained on numbers. And are you like your 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 views become your threshold. And then if you're not beating that threshold constantly, your brain tricks you into thinking that you're no longer successful at all. Yes. And so I've had to recently once again for the 800th time, if you've been listening to the show, retrain my brain to remember that there are people that actually really love us. So oh, it's yeah. a thing that I struggle with. And so uh, lately people have been in person complimenting like or or saying how big much they love this show, how much they love Guilty Pleasures. I'm reading Guilty Pleasures right. fans out in the world, yeah. which is very exciting. Um, and especially on this trip, a lot. The most conversations I've had are people pitching me movies to do for that show. And I'm like, oh, you guys are real. Oh, that's You're sweet. Out there. Um, yeah, but, I've gotten a lot of love for phoning it in as well. Oh, that's that's been coming out, which is great to hear because we like that show, but it's not as easy to title as Without a Recipe and it's not as known yet. So it's sure. great that the audience has found it and really likes it. It's, I feel like those who know know that show's just that's the best. That's so fun. Um, uh, but I'm very excited to, to report that I finally can call myself a capital I influencer. <gasps> I did it. I feel like this trip. I unlocked true influencer status because you were talking about seeing live music and I've gone to jazz with you yep. after every activity that I've done each day. I go to another jazz bar to see more music. <laughs> but part of why I'm here, I saw your show and then my boys Brass Tracks are do- were doing a residency and I mentioned it on this show and so many people in the crowd were like, hey, I came here because you guys talked about it on the show. And I'm yeah. like, oh, shit, I should have yeah. had a code. Yeah, you should have. I should have had a code. should have had a little. I did coupon, it. Like, you should have gotten a little money from that. But I didn't tell everyone that I was going to be going to those shows. And I, I've gone to two of them because they do different sets. I might go to a third. Uh, and so I've gotten to now basically, I've gone to Lou Burger with, with fans. Mm-hmm. I've gone to Brass Tracks with fans. And I'm just enjoying music and art with That's fans. Great. Which my preferred way to tour. We should do a tour where I don't do anything and we just oh. all enjoy something together and we get to sit around and you can hear me laugh at the same thing Ooh, you're liking. Ooh, yeah, the audience tour. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's really been come a delight for me. Join us in the audience of our favorite artists. <laughs> come, come, join us to watch the season finale of The Last of Us. Yeah, yeah. Just... the Zach Cornfield talent show. I but no, 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 that no, makes no, it no. seem like I'm performing. Zach Cornfield <laughs> uh, produced talent show. The curated, curated by Zach. The Zach Cornfield watch along. Yeah, okay. we're just gonna hang out, and I think that I'll only sell enough tickets for um, a living, a large living room. It'll be like 25 people 25 a night. People. We'll kind of sit on a couch, sit on some pillows, have a jazz, we'll order some pizza. Have a jazz trio come in and oh, play. Oh, fuck, that'd be good. Yeah, I've been listening to jazz trio like to You just want to have a party. Yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of a party, but we'll sell tickets. I want to party with strangers. Okay. And they'll be expensive tickets. I guess that would be expensive. I, well, I want to find a way to make it. Maybe I can get it sponsored by Quiznos so that mm. the money doesn't, you know, we, the people don't have to pay. Yeah. That'd that be good. sounds nice. Yeah, we want to give it for free, but somebody's got to pay. Someone's got to pay, somebody's so it's going to be pay. Quiznos. We're talking about HelloFresh. Do you want to be a little cooking maven, but you don't have time to go shopping? You don't have time to even think about recipes? That's me. Look, I... Cooking requires a lot of brain power for me, and when I get home after a long day, I don't want to think, I just want to do, I want to make something delicious, I want someone to have done all the thinking for me, and in the process, make me learn a little bit. What I love about HelloFresh is that you're going to get all the ingredients delivered right to your door, it's easy, you don't need to go to the supermarket, they're going to give it to you, they're going to send it to you. And the Protein Smart, you've got recipes featuring 30 grams of protein, you got the one pot pork and black bean chili, or maybe a little creamy Dijon dill chicken. Go to HelloFresh.com slash TryGuys60 and use code TryGuys60 for 60% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash TryGuys60 and use code TryGuys60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Dang, that's a good deal. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Hey, all you business owners out there, I want to help you make your business even better because NetSuite by Oracle, they just rolled out the best offer that we've ever seen. NetSuite, of course, gives you the visibility and control you need to make better decisions faster. And for the first time in NetSuite's 22 years as the number one cloud financial system, you can defer payments of a full NetSuite implementation for six months. That's no payment and no interest for six months. And you can take advantage of this special financing offer today. NetSuite is number one because they give your business everything you need in real time, all in one place to reduce manual processes, boost efficiency, build forecasts, and increase productivity across every department. Look, you want the power to have all the information you need to make better decisions for your business, and NetSuite is making that easier than ever. If you've been sizing NetSuite up to make the switch, then psh, you know this deal is unprecedented. No interest, no payment. Take advantage of this special financing offer at netsuite.com slash tryguys. netsuite.com slash tryguys to get the visibility and control you need to weather any storm. netsuite.com slash tryguys. Oh, I have a question for you. I've been thinking about trying to do an eat the menu out here. Yeah. Do you think doing a halal guys cart Ooh. is viral enough? I don't know if that's a question for me. Is that that's a question for the world? Is halal? I mean, halal guys. I know is in New York. No, it's in LA, and I know it's in LA. Pretty and sure it's it in Chicago. Slaps. Yeah. And I feel like the word halal has enough yeah, international right? yeah. intrigue. Um, I mean, also you should just do it because it's I so it's delicious. Good. I just don't. I'm like, is there enough stuff? The other options would be Baba Gum Shrimp Co. But that's going to be so much stuff. But and it's going to be so bad. It's going to be so bad. And I'm like, I don't, don't know what else to do while I'm here. I tried to get this Michelin star restaurant downstairs, but they're going to change their menu over. Halal so. Guys is exciting because, I mean, it would force you to change up the aesthetic of the show. Right. But that's kind of exciting. Yeah, I mean, I would probably go and get it all from the cart. And then I would oh, eat and then it come here, back here. But then I'd still have people run and get more of the cart. There's just not that much at the cart. No, right? I I think they. I mean, I only ever get one thing, so I can't say. So we also, yeah. Additionally to doing the show, we just recorded the cast on our album for 
Wizard of Friendship. That's so, so fun. The Wizard of Friendship cast album is the next Lou Berger album. Are you going to print too many vinyls like we did? And definitely. <laughs> um, definitely going to sit on uh, thousands of vinyls in a storage unit somewhere. No, we're not going to do that. Um, we're gonna... It's going to be mostly digital, I'd imagine. I yeah. think that's the right call. <laughs> we, we learned that's the right call. Yeah. The one thing that kind of sucks about not having a physical copy is people who come to the merch uh, table have been like, oh, can I get the soundtrack? Which we're like, we don't have. We don't have it yet. Because we wanted, well, we wanted to record it after the cast had a lot of performances. So everyone just knows their part super well, yeah. confidently can sing it. And they'll sing it even better because they're not dancing while they're singing it for once. In a normal show, they would have been rehearsing for much longer than a normal show. Yeah, we, a, I mean, a, we, no, I mean, it's true. Like in a traditionally put up show, we would have had a lot longer than two weeks together as a cast before yeah. our first show. Well, like, you know, Sweeney Todd, for instance, they've got their full cast. They're up and running in previews right now, but they haven't recorded their album yet. Yeah. I mean, that's how the Broadway is. The it. thing is, though, like normally a show runs for more than a month, right? So about two months in, you probably have the cast recording available. And then it runs for, you know, hopefully forever, but at least a couple of years is the is the expectation of a Broadway show. Okay, uh, I told you guys both this. So I got to play Keith's dad in the show. Yes, uh, and you were every, tremendous. Every, I, you were a great Keith's dad. Oh, stop. One man. of the definitely, best. Definitely, definitely. You definitely oh, milked keep, the scene keep the going. hardest. Keep telling yeah. me more. You were up there oh, the longest. You were up stop. there until the wizard entered, which is normally after Keith Zad is already off stage. I, I tried to really make it as, just savor my time as much you as possible. You did a great job. It was fun. It, uh, you did a good job. I mean, I told you one that immediately, like all the feelings rushed back of like, I didn't even, I didn't even do anything. I didn't even practice anything. I'm having the time of my life. Uh, <laughs> But like, cause like, it's not like, it's not work that I can necessarily be proud of. I just got thrust into yeah. a scene and I still was like, oh yeah. yeah. But, um, I sort of danced for maybe two and a half minutes. You know, you guys do a dance. I tried to copy it. And you were the first person that like took charge. You dance. actually led some of the dance. It was great. I was like, great. Yeah. Yeah, we it, were all doing what you were doing. It was hard to be up there and not wiggle my hips, you know. Mm -hmm. It's it's you're you have me standing there and music's going, I'm going to dance. You got to. Uh but I by the time I got back down to my seat was fully winded. Like embarrassingly so. Yeah. And it's not a lot of work that I did, and it made me realize how hard like cuz you told me guys a lot that you were like gym prepping for this, and it didn't fully click in how exhausting it is to dance and sing every day, you know, what, five days, five shows a week? Yeah. Seven shows a week? With the yeah, seven shows a week, five days. I mean, and definitely, like, you get winded by the end of the song, but you do get more stamina. The thing is that we all learn, though, is that no amount of gym prep actually gets your dancing muscles up to speed. Oh. Because they're, they're not the same. <laughs> Jogging is not dancing. You know, sure. dancing, you move laterally. Well, that's you why move. you should have done the fitness marshal. Honestly, I was doing a lot of fitness marshal, and I think that was the most useful thing that I did. But Shut even up. that, it's not the same, because, like, you're not just dancing, you're traveling, you're kicking, you're doing, like, you're moving all these different directions. You're also, like, there's blocking that you're doing within the dancing. It's like, I'm not just dancing this move. I'm going there, and then I'm going there, and I'm singing, and we've had to learn when do you sing when can you drop out a line like stupid idea initially it has gone through the most changes because it used to be everyone singing all the words all the time we found that that made it too hard to understand the words because everyone was basically jogging <laughs> <laughs> and it just made it too hard so we turned some of the ensemble into oz just to give us chords and lou Berger would sing and then that wasn't enough and then we was like okay alex you're going to say this line by yourself so keith and huey can breathe and then keith's going to say this line by himself so that Alice can breathe. And then Huey will say that line by himself and that we'll make them look like solos, but they're actually just breaks. Wow. Wait, okay, before we got interrupted by the uh, siren, oh, yes. but this is a, it's a steamer. It looks like an airplane mask that, that drops down that like does the Bane mask over your face. Yes, if you can't and that see is it. how you use it. But what the most fun thing about this is that what Alex learned is doing something like this, taking care of your health is a similar process to doing drugs. Because you have to have a special device. You've got to put a special liquid or a special substance into a small part of the device. Yeah, it doesn't look completely dissimilar from like a bong. Yeah. Yeah, you have to turn it on. Have you tried to use it like a bong? <laughs> we have not put weed in it. No. And then you turn it on, and then if this was plugged in, it would turn a certain color. Then you, when you're done, you hit a color, and it cleans itself. 
And then Alex has a mask. I have a face mask, and Huey has a face mask. So we all can have different. Whose is this one? Because this one's totally fucked Alex's, up. And why is it Alex, so warped? Because he uses it's, it the most. Yeah. Well, and I also I take it off. Um, I t- you can take just the mask. He's piece always off. just grabbing it like like it's garbage. And I'll I'll like just inhale direct steam. That I'll, one's like, Keith's. Yeah, that Look one. Look how pristine it is. <laughs> this one so careful with looks the new. And then the other guy, the other day, you guys had to do throat steroids. Like you've been really. I took uh, the for the first time. I took steroids for the first time in my life, and it was just because my voice was so tired on Sunday for the last two shows, and I could feel it waning yeah. in strength. And how I was did like, it feel? Did you? Had your, did my voice your felt voice? better for the first show by the concert. I think it had become tired again. But yeah. the thing I didn't realize is that it was going to be like a stimulant yeah. drug. I didn't realize I was going to feel like I was on uppers. Mm-hmm. That was a thing I didn't expect. Uh, and I probably, unless I have to have it, I don't want to do it again because I didn't love the upper feeling of it. It just made me kind of like taking too much caffeine. You're a little too anxious. Um, whereas I liked that it gave me voice confidence, but I didn't like that it made me think about that I had taken steroids a bunch. It really is <laughs> only supposed to be for like emergencies yeah. anyway. It's and that's not, the only way we've used it. Yeah, we would have used it, it once in the you know weeks, weeks. Like, because I definitely hurt my voice in our rehearsals and had to spend like three days not yeah. really singing that much. But I also like, I was directing, so I had to talk the whole day. And then I was singing with them. And I think we were in those first rehearsals trying to sing out to show the type of singing we wanted everyone to do, and also to show to justify that yes, we are also good enough at this to be doing this because you haven't really heard us sing together. Uh, and when we did a vocal day that was just like five hours of singing, and it just blew out all of our voices. And with the radiators, you wake up with your oh, throat it's, all gunked up and, and, and sore. And Even yeah. when it's raining, it somehow feels dry. In New York, yep. I don't really understand that. Burr, burr, burr. We're not sleeping well. You know, we also weren't sleeping enough. We were sleeping like six hours some of those nights, which is enough unless you're doing 16 hours of work that day, and then that's not enough. Oof. We're not eating super healthily. No, either. it's hard to. Like, we, you know, because we only get like two meals really a day before we're about to go do this highly like athletic thing. And then it's like, well, we have to eat a third meal because we just did this crazy workout and we're all starving. So we a lot of times come home and just microwave like whatever tamales. pizza or tamales we have in the freezer. So based on like based on how this is, do you think this is a once in a lifetime chance or is there a version of this that is sustainable to do again, to do longer, to do periodically? Because it, it feels like you guys are pushing yourselves to limits in order to, to live out this dream. Yeah, I mean, I think for Wizard of Friendship, It is more likely that what we would try to do is tour it for some amount of touring time where we'd go to cities for like a weekend. And I don't even know if we'd always, it would be sequential, right? Maybe it'd be like San Diego this weekend, a weekend off, uh, you know, uh, Texas this weekend. And I don't don't know how we do it yet. I'd have to look into it, but we have been talking with some touring companies, but even that would be like mid 2024 because it's just going to be so far out to to book theaters. You have to Mm -hmm. book them about 15 months in advance. So that's the earliest we could do it. But we've also thought about international shows with it, which would be cool. Ooh, a little a little London residency. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think one thing also for this show, like even just watching like, you know, I went and saw Sweeney Todd last night and the leads of that show are not singing every song. We definitely <laughs> we, the next musical we do. We will not be singing 16 out of the 18 songs in the show. Yeah, I think, you know, <laughs> we still, and we still very heavily want this to be like our next comedy special. We want to figure out a way to film yeah. it somehow. Yeah. And it's a cool property. It's, yeah. it's a thing that's made now. We can always do it. Yeah, I mean, you know that my brain was was thinking about that while it was going, because you've talked to me about, you know, your dream version of it, which I won't spoil, but it, it definitely... You know, it has the vibe. It's meant to look like a PBS special, uh-huh. right? It's meant to have right. painted sets. So mm-hmm. it's not, it's a big production. And I think the hardest thing would be within the context of, like, you want to film this on a stage, right? right. Or like a, a, like a studio a sound stage. stage. Sound yeah. stage. And so with all the songs that you have, how do you mix up the visual language mm-hmm. to, you know, because you have different musical styles. So I think you would want to have different, directorial styles you want the music video quote unquote of the songs to not be all filmed the same way per se um so it's it's not nothing but i don't think it's impossible 
Um, yeah, I think it's quite doable. It's just a matter of like. And I mean doable for myself funding. Well, yes. and, then, and then I think there's absolutely like, I don't know why a company wouldn't take a swing on this because again, I think it can be very modestly budgeted mm -hmm. and is awesome. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's so fun. If we can get more people to see it, I think it will have an opportunity. But either way, like the the way that it exists now is super fun. And if we were to tour oh. it, it would obviously be in, be in bigger venues and some things would change. The projections would change some. And we get like, I was like, maybe I could just build the whole show in projections. We just do it on one of those big projection sound stages. Oh my God, the, the ones that the Mandalorian yeah. films yeah. on? Yeah. <laughs> those things are wild. Uh, uh, Rachel's husband has filmed on that and I was picking his brain about it. It's really- What do, what do they call They have a funny the name. Volume. The, the volume. The volume. Yeah, and it's, okay, so if you guys don't know, they this is like the new thing that Disney does. It's instead of a green screen, it's a giant 360 LED screen where, you know, you'll have physical props in the world, but then they'll build out a Western town. And then you can, can control like, doop, doop, doop. can we paint the buildings brown? Okay, they do that. And can mm -hmm. we move the sun over here? Okay, let's add a cloud. And like, you are digitally mapping uh -huh. this world and then you film it with cameras. It's almost like the way we used to use miniatures. We we never did it. Yeah, right. But <laughs> yeah, but also did. like the camera and the screen can work in tandem. So when the camera moves here, the screen knows to move in the correct way uh -huh. to get a more dramatic or correct look. Yeah. Like because when you move a camera, it changes your perspective of the world, but a screen doesn't necessarily always do that. So you have to, like, they have to be linked together. It's crazy. I think that's a little above our, uh, <laughs> our, our abilities, it be, but it's uh, yeah. I think that's going to make it more expensive, but it's very Probably. cool. Yeah. I think uh, if we could get, because we were watching, we've been watching all the things that inspired different elements of Wizard of Friendship. So we watched Monty Python and the Holy Grail, which is obviously very low budget, but mostly shot on location outside. But then yeah. we watched Wizard of Oz, which when you rewatch Wizard of Oz, it's pretty cheap. Like the actual sets of Oz are just big, you know, studio flats and they have some little bit in front of it, but it's all painted. It's not, you know, cheap, cheap, but like, it's like, oh, I see how you did that. You just painted a bunch of walls and then you put some fake corn in front of those painted corn walls and you just operate within the 30 feet of playable space you're allowed to use. The way they made the tornado, they had it at the Academy That's Museum. Cool. So cool. Yeah. I couldn't even begin to explain it, but look it up. It's dope. It's dope. It's frustrating because we are trying our darndest to really be led by by art, you know, which is a, it sounds pretentious, but fuck it, I'll say it. Like we want to uh, lead by what our hearts creatively want to make, not necessarily what is rewarded with the most clicks, but then you kind of have to think about what's rewarded with the most clicks because you need to be responsible. And then you also need to think about the economics because art and economics have never been separate. Mm -hmm. Like you've, if you just make whatever the hell you want, uh, one, you'll alienate audiences, and two, you will go broke doing it. So it's just this puzzle of how do you uh, play within smart economics to make something that means something? Mm -hmm. And it's a, a question that we will be vexed by for our entire lives. Uh, but I think we're doing a pretty good job. And so so something like this, like Wizard of Friendship, you guys figured out a way to, at worst, break even, and then <laughs> that's okay because you got to do a great, meaningful thing. And it, like... It's a meaningful thing for us as artists, but also I really think it helps the brand of Lou Burger sure, be more yeah. specific. I think there's a lot of people who, for good reason, know Lou Burger as guests on Eat the Menu, but don't really know what it does beyond that. And now we can say, oh, Lou Burger, they were on Eat the Menu. They put up an off-Broadway show that sold out. Like, they, at right. least there's something they can grab onto that's not just, oh, they have white people talking, I, and oh, they made the Disney Princess song. This helps, I think, give us a placement of where... And also it helped us find a placement of where we belong. And I think musical theater audiences are the audiences we need to be trying to reach because what we do is musical theater. Even when we're not doing a theatrical musical, our show is musical theater. It's not stand up. It's very different. It's not even, it, and it's, we call it a comedy concert sometimes, but it's a musical theater comedy concert. I've told you this, but my favorite, one of my favorite songs that you guys do is Keith and the Band. It's the second <laughs> song in in Wizard of Friendship, and, and I, I know you do it live as well in the concerts, but what's fun is that it is really an Alex Huey showcase. Like, it's a hard rocking, fun song that then also calls out the an elephant in the room of like, hey, I know some of you fans 
are here to potentially just see Keith and we're going to prove to you right here and now that right. you are wrong. And then you come out of that song and you go like, oh, fuck, Alex and Huey rock. Yeah. And then and then it's like it's a nice, fun, tongue in cheek way to play mm-hmm. with that. And it gets um, it out of the way. Sure. It, that, that, like it, it serves a lot of functions, but it also helps everyone who's there as a Try Guys fan immediately gets gratified because I sing a little bit about the Try Guys right up top. Mm. And now we move on to our next song, which it sometimes is <laughs> the Tiny Little Tickle song, or sometimes it's something like Disney Princess. Sometimes you just put that right out the gate. You're like, okay, here's something you didn't know that you wanted, and here's something you didn't know you wanted. You got both of those things. Now we can go on with the rest of the songs, and eventually we'll give you why people talk about some other sort of hits that you know. It tells you who Lou Berger is specifically in the lyrics, mm-hmm. which it, you know is a question we get asked a lot. And also it's like, this is when we met, this is what we do. And uh, yeah, one thing that was really fun actually about doing that scene was having you in the audience the other night because I was able to like point at you and like reference you and stuff. Mm-hmm. There is one line where you're like, I, it, we're, what, it's so fucking good. It's like, we're like Try Guys, but we make real no, jokes. It was, it was, <laughs> and you point right at me and I, and there's, yeah. si- there's like a silence where no one knew if they were allowed to laugh. And I was like, ha ha ha. <laughs> the, the line is, so, Keith says the only thing that differentiates Lou Berger from the Try Guys is that I'm the most famous member of oh, yeah. of Lou Berger. Of this and then group, I, right? And then I said that's not what differentiates Lou Berger from the Try Guys. We make music and actual jokes. And then I pointed right at Zach. I, I died. Which obviously, is not my opinion of the Try Guys. Right? And not, it's, Zach, just, it's my opinion. We're just playing these big tropic yes. characters right at the top. I then go on to say, well, no one would hear our music if it weren't for the marketing engine of Second Try LLC. <laughs> the strong and mighty marketing our engine. It's one of my favorite lines in the show. And then, you know, no one would ever hear our songs if it weren't for the Try Guys and we get in a fight and that's what breaks the wizard's heart. Yeah. But uh, it's sort of like, it's not really our dynamic, but it's an easily perceived dynamic. Mm. So we like lean into it harder. Just well, it to, feels like wrestling, which I know you're big into. Like yeah. you're all, you're playing a heel I've in the beginning. a couple times. We, oh, it, I'm it's 100% like a WWE a right up top. Like yeah. we're, we're, you know, and then we break the wizard's heart. It does feel very like, you know. And also like, and we're know, being us. In the art of it, we're like actually acting very upset at each other at the top of the show. It's like very almost dramatic acting. It's a little bit played up, but then as soon as you get to Nofrendia, it turns into children's preschool entertainment acting, where like we go from like, Alex is like, fuck you, man, that's not dumb. And we're like really upset. And then we get there, it's like, oh my gosh, what's going on? <laughs> and it just, we performance wise become a part of this fantasy realm. And then, you know, at the beginning, otherwise it's very real. With our remaining time, let's talk about New York City. And New again, City. you've been living here. You'll have lived here for a month and a half when all said and done. You know that that makes you, you've lived in New York City yeah. longer than I have. Wow. As an adult person. Wow. Because I, li- I grew up, I was born here, lived in the suburbs, had a month. Oh, okay. Wait, no, we'll have tied. I had a month after college and then I moved to LA. And otherwise, as an adult, I've only vacation right. here. Um, but let's just say you're on your way to becoming a true yeah. New Yorker. <laughs> yeah. So what are the, what is the checklist of New York things that you need to do in order to be a New Yorker before you leave here? Have you seen discarded food on the subway? I saw a severed hot dog on the subway You trains. also saw another fun piece of discarded food, right? What did on I the say? subway? What did I say? A tortilla? <gasps> Oh, this was good. I didn't tell you this. I was walking. Okay, so during uh, their show, um, uh, they throw tortillas out during White People Taco Night, similar to how we threw out chicken during our tour. very similar. And uh, about three blocks from your show, I saw one little tortilla in the middle of the street, and it was beautiful. (laughs) It was definitely I have a photo. I will show it to you as soon as we're done recording. It's great. Uh, So I've seen that. The thing I have learned (laughs) that is the funniest thing to me is... In New York, for whatever reason, people walking walk straight at you. (laughs) They don't want to infer if they're going to go to the right or the left of you. They're going to walk through you at you. And the only way is to walk right back at them. (laughs) You have to walk right back at them. Challenge them. They're just challenging you. So you have to look and say in this moment, am I bigger than this person? Yes, I'm walking right at them. Which for me often gets to be yes. Not always. 
but I've learned I'm just going to walk straight, straight at people because Love they're just that. walking straight at me. Yeah. And I hope you take that back with you to the Grove in LA. Yeah. I I'm, want I'm you. just plow. I'm like, oh, you just got to plow right at these yeah, people. I love that. <laughs> um, okay. You've done uh, 2 a.m. pizza, of course. Yes. We've had some slices, late night, mediocre slices that are totally fine. Fuck yeah. You have done, we've talked about jazz every night. I, let me tell you, I feel like freaking Ryan Gosling in La La Land these days. Where I am, I look. I resented the fuck out jazz of jazz. Is your life now? But I love me some jazz. I want to bring it. I want to save it. I want to. I want to be the white guy that saves jazz. You're gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna <laughs> live my little La La Land fan. I love it. Seeing music every night Can't is get enough. is great. There's all. I do like that. It's it is a city that never sleeps because, and I learned didn't learn this on this trip, but once it was like two thirty in the morning, and Becky needed like uh, sinus medication. And I only had to walk a block to get it. Love that. Yeah, that is <laughs> I was like, that's crazy that I can get medicine at 2.30 in the morning and I don't even have to go more than 100 feet. It was, it's kind of nuts. Yeah, from my parents' apartment, there is, and one of my favorite bagel places uh, where I can get an incredible bagel. What is it? Well, I'm not going to tell people where okay. I live. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, fair. But tell me the bigger yeah, place yeah, later. I will. Uh, there's a Levain nearby, which is those cookies are dangerously good and they just came out with a vegan flavor and it rocked Whoa. my I mean vegan recipe I should say I say it's vegan the same flavor. flavor oh it tastes, it tastes vegan <laughs> it tastes but it's vegan. not <laughs> uh, but it's it's this like giant chocolate walnut chocolate chip walnut cookie and it would I would eat it and it would wreck me and I would say yes yes please more please daddy and now and they did it vegan now for you. they do it vegan and it's just the sugar that wrecks me which is mm. a nice change yeah. um it's just a delight to I just love also the like the energy because you have you can have yourself a lazy ass day but then like you know in LA I have days where I just don't want to do anything and then here you step outside and there's people hustling and bustling and moving there's always there's a million stories around you everywhere you look someone is doing something going somewhere and I just find it infectious it I can't do it for a long time but I I just, I, I find myself very inspired by the energy of all these atoms colliding. Uh huh. It's busy out there. And I mean, we're, you know, close to Times Square where it's too busy, insanely busy, but even we're in, we're in a good spot. It's just far enough off that it's not mostly tourists that are walking. It is, I think, people who live here. And uh, we get to go to this theater and see ourselves every day, which is hilarious. The big giant poster of us is so funny. I can't believe how long it's made it. I know. By now, we yeah, thought it would be down. We aren't, yeah, we aren't yeah. paying for this location. We're just, we just pay for the printing costs because maybe we're like, we love you guys. No one's booked this. So until someone else pays for it, it's yours. Oh. So it's super, they, wonderfully kind thing. Perhaps the most kind thing that's happened to us in the entire run. This is the marquee outside the theater. The big poster. Oh, my God. Us. I yeah. had no idea. I we thought just, that was, we you paid had told for the about design that. and the printing cost and the application cost. Cost, but we aren't actually leasing the space. No kidding. Yeah, because no one else bought it. Yeah, we wow. Uh, Winnie, Winnie the, the Pooh, the musical. Suck it, Winnie. <laughs> you, I mean, fucking me, you fucking no, no, hear they, me, bro? You fucking hear me, Winnie? Were done. You're well, fucking cool. dead to us. Just, You're fucking dead to us, Winnie. The thumbnail. You think you can walk around with no pants on? That's our thing. <laughs> That's, that is Zach's thing. That's our fucking thing. That's fucking thing. Zach's thing. T-shirt, no pants. Uh, Little honey bear bitch. No. Fuck you, Winnie. We've seen a fight. <laughs> Heard people screaming. I've seen... Uh... Woken up by jackhammers. Oh, yeah, that was fun. You know what I've started doing that my dad does that I used to really think was unhinged? Uh, if he is downtown, he won't, you know, us, us normies, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll take our phones out and say, oh, I need to take the, the queue to this stop. No, he just gets on the first train and just goes uptown and gets closer and then gets off and then gets off. Like, he just, he, like, plays uh, uh He, like, it's like when you're driving and you're like, oh, I could turn right right now. I'll just do it. Sure, like when a we little, like, yeah. I know how to carve through the city and not go the directions, but uh -huh. I'll get to where I'm going. It might actually take me longer, but I'm in control of my situation. And it's, what's kind of crazier, though, is that, like, subways, like, will often just totally veer in a different direction. Yes, they don't. It's like, it's a very, uh, but That's he. That's the worst, too, when you're like, yeah. oh, this is going the right way. And then, eh! But he knows what the commonality uh, uh, right. stops are, where you can then catch an express. And his theory is just get closer to my home. Because what if, this is right. this is where the Jewish anxiety like comes back in, where he's like, what if uh -oh. the, the line shuts down? Or oh, no. what if there's a big fire and no subways today? Like, he just get me closer to home 
at any cost. And so I started doing it and it probably took me longer, but it was fun. <laughs> it was like, ooh, oh, now we're over here. Now we're, oh, we, we ended up at 96th day. Street. Wasn't supposed to be there. I guess I have to take a taxi now. Yeah. Uh, God forbid I get on a bus. I don't understand them. I'm trying. Oh, I'm never going to take the buses here. Why would I bother? They're not bad. I just don't get it. Yeah. I just train. I, we don't, I don't need to you don't need to do go anything. anywhere. So the only times I do, I'm like, I'm going to take a train because it's going to go the distance. Your poor wife, every time she comes here, Becky has had to uh, live in Midtown. And so next time you yeah. come to New York, we're doing... We're doing Lower East Side or, or, or West Brooklyn Village or, or Brooklyn. Yeah, I get, know. Get you out of here. I know. Midtown is definitely chaos. Becky, unfortunately, like left at some point right when all the shows were getting out. Oh, my God. the worst time to travel in Midtown is at basically 10 p.m. 10, 10 to 10.30 is a nightmare. She was throwing bows outside of six. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of carve her way out. Yeah. Yeah. But it's fun and we've had a great time. It's been really, I, I feel like living in this little college apartment has been a really gr- great creative focus. Because okay. mm-hmm. especially in the building of the show and even now, you know, we were talking about the show exclusively. So you wake up, you go work on the show. While you're at lunch in between the shows, you're like, what if we did this? And then you go back and you bring that to rehearsal and you try it. And like literally uh, there was a time where I walked out of the bathroom in the theater and I said, Nia, you know that line where you say this is the wizard? Can right after you, can you go? <laughs> <laughs> and like just every moment I had was thinking about what way can I improve this show a little bit? And uh, as a director, it's great to see those little moments that I had that were came out of nowhere yeah. and they hit every night. So what you're saying is that when you come back from this, we need to move in together so that we have a Try Guys house. <laughs> I, you know, I gotta say, <laughs> sell the office. Yeah, have every Miles. If you're li- if you're editing this, you're moving in, buddy. I, know, I think I, it's helpful. No, you have a baby now, um, and I think that your child will understand when they look back at the great legacy of work you yeah. created together. Um, I think that it'll be worth it. Yeah, it was very helpful, and like we're gonna have to convince Rachel to leave the twins because there was one night we were Bring here. The twins, yeah, and, and that's true. They got great ideas, and we <laughs> recorded sound cues for the show at one thirty in the morning, what? and those are the sound cues in the show because we were like, oh, we should have like little when the heart pieces come down, there should be little songs. Okay, well let's. I guess we'll do it right now because <laughs> we're going to need to tech those tomorrow if we do them. You know what I thought would be funny is if every time there's a blackout in between scenes, if it was just you on a mic going, ba da 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 da, like really, but like poorly. <laughs> like I mean, it's we just kind doing of, transitions. We just made those little stop motion y transitions and said, because I never wanted to leave the audience in darkness. I always wanted yeah. them to be entertained, even if we all have to do crazy costume changes. So Because that's what a musical will do blackout and then have the orchestra play. And that's right. kind of your mental cue yeah. to applaud yes. in between scenes. So if you did a really shitty version of that, it's like da 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 da. <laughs> we thought about that was one of the options was going to be just like sort of shitty or like MIDI instrumental of what was before. Yeah. So it wasn't going to be us singing it poorly, but it was going to be like a goofy sounding version of what they. Just I mean, heard. I'm sure that would be a beautiful. That would. Yeah. Have, there's a way to do it very beautifully, but. Um, yes, we could have done it even dumber. And that's our dumbest part is that like heart, heart piece number three, Lord of the Rings, the two towers, like extended that. edition. It's just, it's just way too long, but it really becomes this magnificent moment. But it's been fun, like even like getting those things to come down, figuring that artistically out. Like how do I make a t-shirt de- descend from the ceiling? How do I route that? How, how, who's going to do it? How are we going to focus the light on that? How are we going to get the sound cue to happen at the same time? Like, so that logistics has been really fun because it's something that I've never done. And as a director, I got to be very intimately a part of the creation of every little moment. Uh, and also there were times where like the lighting designer did something dope and I didn't even see it until after it had already been happening for a week. And I, was, and I had to like shoot a text over to Yang and be like, Yang, this moment is sick. I never saw it because I'm on stage. Because I couldn't, you know, we, the first week of shows, we'd watch the show on tape every night. And sometimes there would be a wider camera that was watching. And I was like, oh, shit, that's happening? I didn't know that. That's great. <laughs> and then sometimes it would be like, oh, shit, that's happening. That's wrong. I'll Did any of you guys it. have to give uh, performance notes to each other of like, hey, Keith, you're um, not saying this joke good. Well, Keith is the director. So he, he gives both <laughs> Huey and I notes. I mean, it's actually, it's it's not really something we're not not used to, though. Because yeah. like when we're on tour 
we we give each other thoughts all the time where it's just like, oh, when you do, when you're going into, there's a tiny little tickle in my anus, you should do this thing beforehand. You know, yeah. even, and so, normally, I'm definitely of the mind of like, can you try doing it this way? Yeah. I'm not saying you're doing it wrong. I'm saying, I think if you do it this way, you might get a bigger laugh. Ugh, I'm such a little note slut. I love giving notes. I love getting notes. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. And I've like, I have a lot, I have notes I have to give, but they're mostly tech notes for today's show. Cause I take notes in every single show. Speaking of um, blank slut. Uh, so we on our Patreon, we have uh, four shirts that we give out a year right. to a certain tier of, of fans. And so we, we have, uh, we started doing fun quotes and little inside jokes. Um, I honestly, my mind is drawing a complete blank right now, except for this example. But one that we were debating putting out says soup slut. Soup slut. Which uh, I am proudly. Which I think uh, is, I think it's okay to wear, but I agree that some people won't want to wear. It's an incredible shirt, but we realize that some of you may not want to receive a shirt <laughs> that says slut in the mail unless you've specifically ordered it. So uh, maybe I'll, I just wanted to tell you that because I thought it was funny, but maybe we'll go onto the Patreon and see, we'll, we'll pull that tier what if specifically. What it said daddy's face? Favorite soup slut. <laughs> oh right, we did do a daddy's favorite shirt, yeah. right? Because uh, that's towing the line of soup slut danger, but it's not quite. You think there. daddy's favorite soup slut is is softer than soup slut? No, I think daddy's favorite soup slut is way harder. I think daddy's favorite on its own has its implications. Sure, daddy's when favorite. Wearing it, yeah, you know? like oh, daddy. Ooh, daddies. I'm but you daddy's don't run favorite. the risk of your 10-year-old opening it and being, Mommy, what's a soup slut? Well, they know they're getting soup slut. Okay. But they can't control not getting soup slut is the thing. You know? Kids are opening the mail. <laughs> if you join our Patreon, <laughs> we was. will send you a shirt that says soup yeah, slut. Yeah, I mean, whether if you're on the tier and not. you're the tier for three months, you're going to get a shirt that says soup slut. And I don't know how to stop that from happening. It's kind of like the Clingsbury Crunch of, of shirts. Maybe we could just do a Clingsberry Crunch shirt instead of that. That's a that. good idea. Because it's replacing your shirt. What was going to replace my shirt? No, it's replacing the shirt of the right the member that. Well, no I know, but we have to put that one if it's yours, but all, the rest of them are significant to us. Uh huh. So the fourth shirt should be significant to all of us. Because okay. if it's soup slut, that's so just you. So what if you. it says we're all soup slut? Well, Eugene, I think, would qualify. He's a soup slut. Yeah. I guess Are I you not a soup slut? <sighs> I don't know if I'm a soup slut. How much soup do you need to enjoy to quantify being a soup slut? I would say soup Multiple slut is a soup. soups. I think it's a state of mind. Okay. I last night poured a hemp low, was out to dinner, got some pasta. It was a delicious pasta restaurant. I was not satiated. And so we asked for the check. And then I ran over and I said, just kidding. Can I get a dessert minestrone? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the right call. And I got him in his trotty, and we're waiting. Like, we're all waiting for me. The dinner's over. Everyone's plates are clear. They've cleaned up the table. And then about 10 minutes later, th later the guy comes and goes, Your zupa, senor? And I go, Thank you. A minestrone <laughs> is not a very filling soup, but it was nice. More. I guess if you only need a little more, it's going to fill that. Hole that you had in your stomach. I wanted hot, hot vegetables in a liquid. Yeah, in a, in a vegetable do you broth. Like to, do you dip bread? I'm a big bread dipper. I do, but I didn't. The bread was gone. I had already had the pre. This was, you know, I had my oil bread. I had my noodle, my pasta bread. Now was time for my hot liquid. With your minestrone dessert. I really, guys, I think I'm on something. Someday. <laughs> What if we open up, like, okay, can you imagine? It's a coffee shop, but instead of getting coffee, they just give you mugs of soup. Uh, like soups on tap? Like, like, I'm talking like a mug with a handle, uh -huh. and it's either bone broth or chicken noodle. I mean, and you can put, like, if you could put soup in a, in a, in a, it is Coffee a go cup mug. to go? I think that oh. has existed. You know what? I know it has, but where is it? I'm in the greatest city I in the like world. I feel like this is the city that would happen. Well, it. find it. <laughs> okay. Make something that you would love. Yeah. Min, uh, not minestrone. Uh, matzo ball shots. Shut the what the fuck? What? Is it in a? Makes, she takes a shot glass, fills it with chicken soup, and puts matzo ball in it. Like a uh, little, a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's adorable. Uh, like yeah. you're at a wedding. Yeah. 
If I, if, yes, if I were at a restaurant and they, instead of like, here's a little bruschetta from the, from the kitchen as a little, like if they just brought me a shot glass of soup, <laughs> I would be Wouldn't ecstatic. that be beautiful? Beautiful. Yeah. Instead of like getting a shot of like tequila, they just sent you little soup shots. You know what? There's a restaurant called Egg Slut. Why can't I open Soup Slut? And it's, you can't, no one's you stopping you. Oh, what about- Get out, stop holding me back. What about little slutty soup baby? Is that better? <laughs> little slutty soup baby. Is that better as what, as a t-shirt? Soup slut, yeah. <laughs> I, I like the simplicity of soup slut. I agree. Do you think I should trademark it before this episode comes out? Just in case. I think you should yeah. make a fucking soup pop-up. Probably right? should open a company. Just a pop-up. Soup Slut LLC. Yeah, I mean, it's a good way to start, right? Yeah. Okay, um, so our merch company has been trying to get us to do a, a, a merch pop-up right. where you guys can come to a store, buy our merch in person, we'll be there behind the counter selling it. Sure, it seems fine. What if I say, yes, but we need soup? And it's a Soup Slut pop-up. I think this is a good idea. That's great. Look how big my hand looks. I want 10% because I uh, I pitched that it should be a pop-up. 10%, 10% is steep. That's a lot. That's a big it's like ask. an agent. I'm an agent. It's a big ass. Okay. You haven't made anything happen yet. I, well, that's more of a I'll manager. I'll tell you what. I will come that's up more with of a, manager a fantastic mulligatani recipe for you. Cool. Because I, by the way, I can't make any <laughs> soups. I, I will be purely going around and drinking the soups and going, hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. mm, that's also good. You don't just put mm. water in a pot and then a bunch of vegetables or something? I don't, Keep Alex, up. I don't make no, anything. No, no, you don't know how to make soup either, do you? Not. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, yes, in so, you, a lot of soups do start with a pot of water, a bunch of vegetables, but that's how you make a broth for a soup. Yeah. And then you take that broth and then you add ingredients and other things to make Keith, the soup. Keith, you're on the team. 10% for you. I can make it. Okay, well, we're running out of time here. No, we're about I think we're just getting started. Eight. I think that we just got to heat it up. So Alex, uh, you're the closest thing we have to Miles right now. So okay. maybe you could give us some New York advice, something you've learned. Oh, can I? May I? Yes, please. Uh, every now and the point, and okay, I'm gonna nail this. The closest okay. thing you have to Miles. Yeah, right at this now. point in our episode, we get advice. Oh fuck, I had it. You were. I don't. Why did I you take it. the lead on this? Because I wanted to you call like it. Snatch the mic, being because, like, let me do this. Because I thought about it earlier, and I oh. want to call it. And, and it, it's advice from an anxious Jew. Ooh, I like that. So can you do that? It's advice from an anxious Jew. Da, 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 da. Uh, you got to do like the whole intro. Oh, like, like, so you, you may be anxious. Uh, now you might, In life, you might be anxious. and You might need an anxious Jew to help you out. Well, luckily, we have a couple of them right here. But we have one who's especially anxious, and that's Alex Lewis. And now it's time for <laughs> advice from, from an anxious, anxious Jew. Jew. Ba, da, da, da. Uh, okay. Well, my if you're an anxious person like me, I'd recommend... Don't deny it and figure out what's best for you. If you need some medication, like me, go get some medication if you can, if you have the means to do so. Otherwise, take deep breaths and just accept the fact that you're an anxious person and there's nothing you can do about it. It's okay. That was advice, advice from, from an anxious to. That was like the most genuine, beautiful advice that we've gotten on this show. Oh, I actually I thought should. that. I don't know. It seemed like advice for anxious people. I thought maybe you'd tell us about like what kind of toast to get as an anxious <laughs> person. Like, oh, if you're an anxious person, you want a good piece of toast. You're going to want to go with what? pumpernickel. Mm. No, when I'm anxious, it's usually because I'm afraid I'm going to throw up. So if I put, I'd be afraid to eat. So what, well, but what if you had to get a toast, what would you get? Just plain white toast? Yeah, plain white toast Great. or sourdough or something. See, there you go. That's real advice. What kind of toast should you get when you're anxious? Plain. I, well, if you're like me and you're anxious about throwing up, I would recommend not getting toast. But toast is what you eat when you have the stomach flu. But when you're anxious about throwing up, you're not rationally thinking. Mm. Oh. So it doesn't really matter. Mm, interesting. Like you just. Well, that's why we're looking for advice. Okay, if you're afraid of throwing up like me, don't eat things when you're afraid of throwing up. Yeah, well, someone's going to start a death out there now. What? Huh? <laughs> well, this has been The Tripod. Thanks so much for listening. I hope the sound was okay. We honestly have no idea. We're wearing lobs, yeah. so I've got this double, I've got this backup Zoom that might be the whole thing. We, we haven't been listening to the sound, so uh -uh. it's possible we sound totally blown well, out. we got a nice mic on the, on, the, on the camera, too. We have three options. We have three options. So if it's bad, dang. I'll try to, if it doesn't go well, I'll try to remember everything that was said and write it down. Oh, that'd, that'd be, great. be great. Yeah, we can, we may, we'll, we can ADR this. Oh, we'll yeah, watch we just it do it all, all over the fact, yeah. To Alex's memory. Yes, um, just Alex's memory, not the camera footage. 
With and that on, uh, yeah. you know, this has been us out in the world. Maybe if you will do some more out in the world pods, I. I mean, this was nice to do it like this, but I, I kind of wish we like went into the middle of the park and narrated. I thought about it. Was we too could just cold. go walking. It was too cold. Yeah, it's, too, it's way too cold out. And then you would have heard the whole time. <laughs> you would have heard so much everything. So loud here. Well, that's been the tripod. I think I'm going to look into my soup slot. You should. It sounds like a lot of work. I would eat there, man. If anyone wants to do the work for me and I'll help you. Dude. Keith! Hit us with the official Soup Slot theme song. Soup Slot, put some soup in your butt. That's right. <laughs> soup Slot, put some soup in your butt. Uh -huh. Soup Slot, oh, yeah. put some soup in your butt. Uh -huh. Soup Slot, uh -huh. put some soup in your butt. The tripod. Have a good ass week.